Welcome to the Parking Report. My name is Seamus Riley. Joining me in this part of the show is Dallas Street Theater Marketing and Business Manager. It's great to have you back on the show. Thanks so much. All righty. So we have, before we start talking about the schedule, let's start talking about the space because we now at Parkland have not one but two. That's right. Let's uh, talk about second stage. Well, we have uh, Parkland Theater second stage, which is our classic black box theater, which is finally, uh, the construction is finally done. We've had uh, one great show in there uh, last season called The Sparrow. Mm -hmm. uh, outside renters are using it to, uh, to uh, have, have meetings, dance recitals, uh, theater performances and uh, it, it's uh, the, and the audience is responding greatly to it. It's a really interesting way of, of, of viewing theater. So black box for those not necessarily completely 100% mm -hmm. with theater parlance uh, is a really a space that can be you know shaped in many different ways. You can do all kinds of types of presentations mm -hmm. in there. Um, you can, a lot of flexibility. Yes, you can you can arrange the seating in uh, different configurations all all the way around. Uh, there's very nice drapes there that that give it this nice kind of neutral playing space. So also used for other kind of presentations or poetry mm -hmm. readings or music performance if you needed to do that. You yes, do you're well. you're right there with the actors or the performers. Very intimate space. It also has one thing that we have never had at Parkland that we were going to put in, but it didn't get done as part of the original theater, mm -hmm. and that is. Is a trap. Can you explain why that is so important? Well, uh, it's it's important if you want to do shows where people rise up out of the floor, or if you want to push someone through a hole in the in the ground. Uh, it's we have it's capable of making a large hole that goes down to the basement. Uh, you can you can put scenic elements over it and have someone emerge from. Uh, a rock that you'd never thought that mm -hmm. they could emerge from. So we're finally able to do Faust now. We can do, <laughs> sure. get, get somebody down to the basement. Um, but it also was a way for us to train our, our students mm -hmm. at how you use that space in terms of bringing other objects onto the, onto the stage that right. wouldn't be there from the beginning. Yes, so you, you could raise uh, entire scenic elements up, up out of the floor. Excellent. So our, our main Parkland Theater also had a little bit of a change in mm -hmm. that it has a new name. Yes, uh, the Harold and Jean Minor Theater. Uh, Mike Minor, uh, a, a local philanthropist, was kind enough to make a donation to, to the college and the theater program. And uh, we're happy to name it uh, in honor of his parents, Harold and Jean Minor. Both of whom were uh, extremely interested in the arts, particularly mm -hmm. theater, and so this was a nice honor. It was a nice sign and a picture of his mom and dad, I think. Uh, yes, the right, right, right there in the theater, theater lobby. So in addition to having the second stage open, we also have now an expanded lobby area, and I know that for you personally, that <laughs> must be just a little bit better in terms of space and organization and structure. Absolutely, and we also have a new ticket office too, so uh, hopefully that'll create a better flow uh, in, the, in the theater lobby. And we're also uh, very excited that we can now accept uh, credit cards with uh, an automatic swiper, uh, so that really uh, turns over uh, the, the patrons and makes sure that they get their tickets and into the theater quicker. Excellent, well it's always nice to be able to, to get people seated as quick as we can. Sure. Let's talk about the shows. Talk to me a little bit about how you, how the season is structured in terms of what shows are in the main stage and mm -hmm. what shows are on the on the second stage. Well, with the second stage, since it requires less scenery, uh, we we've decided to start off uh, the, the theater season in there uh, because we have a our second show has a much larger build. Uh, but in um, October first, we're uh, showing Requis uh, Neighborhood Three: Requisition of Doom which is a, a, a full one-act play uh, about um, a, a suburban community where the kids are immersed in this online horror video game and their parents are becoming more and more concerned about you know their their their, their children uh, the the video game uses uh, GPS satellite imagery and it actually takes place in their neighborhood 
So as the kids get more and more immersed in, into this world, they become more and more paranoid. So uh, we're billing that as a thriller that's uh, probably recommended for uh, mature teens and up. There's some subject matter and, uh, and language, mild language in that. Right. We don't want small children watching video right. games anyway. And keep, that, and keep them away from it. And that will be in the second stage, uh, which is, will provide a great environment. They're uh, planning some wonderful lighting. So, you know, part of the advantage of being a Parkland College um, student, whether you're a theater student or not, mm -hmm. but particularly if you're a theater student, is that you get not only to act and present and do different kinds of things, you also get to work behind the scenes in terms of the production mm. and then the build and the scenery and the lighting. We get people, obviously, in who are experts to help. But it really is an opportunity for students to gain an awful lot of knowledge about the theater. Absolutely. Our, our theater scholarship students uh, really get, a, uh, you know, theater 101 you know, they can do ev everything from stage managing, uh, running crew, working lights, uh, building scenery, costumes. Uh, they really, really get a full education here. So the other advantage of moving some of the space around the theater, of course, we, we got a much bigger costume mm, room, yes. finally, so that we can actually have some space to work in there. A little bit more extra space for some of the things that happen off of, uh, off of the, the main stage and, yes. and the stage areas. So we have a little bit more room to maneuver back in there, which is nice. You talked about the next, uh, the second uh, uh, showing, which is it requires a little bit more of a uh, construction of scenery. Talk a little bit about the next. It's called Noises Off by Michael Frayn and uh, it's one of the first plays that I ever saw and it's it completely fascinated me over the years. Uh, but it's, it's about this British theater troupe who were putting on this naughty little comedy called Nothing On. It takes place in this uh, beautiful English cottage um, and it's about the trials of trying to mount this show to get it ready for opening night. The play's in three acts. Uh, the second act, the entire set revolves. And the players have been playing the show for a while now and they're on each other's nerves. And so, and so you get to see what's happening backstage while the show is going on. So the actors are still using the sets in front of the scene in front of the set, which is now played to the back wall, and you get to see backstage, which is uh, to the audience. Act three, it spins around again. They've been playing the show forever. Everything that you think you know is supposed to happen doesn't. And uh, the show ends up hilariously falling apart. So there's something really delightful about that conceit in theater. And I mean, mm -hmm. the, a lot of the British plays and some American plays as well, which have played around with that notion of what's happening within cast and characters and playwrights who've built different things around it. So yes. it's really interesting conceit. Really looking forward to seeing that. That's a super show. Yeah, absolutely. What else is online then for us? Um, then in January, uh, it's still in the works, but it's our annual student production. And Joy Hofsummer, our artistic director, is going to be working with uh, the students to uh, create uh, an original piece. Oh, very good. Uh, so uh, I don't believe we have dates for that yet, uh, at least not in the theater brochure. Uh, but then we resume again in February, uh, back in the second stage, with uh, a reduction of Shakespeare's As You Like It, called uh, The Curate Shakespeare As You Like It, being the record of one company's attempt to perform the play by William Shakespeare. Uh, usually with some of the, the, the Shakespeare plays, you require a large, large cast and many costumes. Uh, this reduction uses, I believe, seven actors uh, who are a traveling group of players and uh, their attempt to cover all of these roles. Uh, so you not only have the wonderful comedy by, uh, by Shakespeare, but an, the, the, the additional uh, a comedy of the, these actors trying to pull it all off. So that whole notion of like the summer stalker rep theater mm -hmm. where you're sort of playing many people, it's interesting to me that some major Hollywood stars now are starting to go back on stage to try oh, to sure. perform, almost as if they want to get back into this, uh, again, another kind of idea play about a play and the production of a play, but the real sort of life of, of what it's like to be on the stage. Right, I mean, there are, there are several movie stars who return to do uh, Shakespeare in the Park, uh, in um, Central Park year after year, um, be just because there's you know there's the, the training that you get uh, performing on the stage is unlike anything, and also a different experience. I mean, a different oh, sure. sense for the actor of of really being engaged in a different way than they can be in front of a camera. Absolutely. Example. 
Do we have anything else left? After yes, that? we have our big musical. I bet uh, you I knew it was going to be a musical. <laughs> uh, and it's a big one. Uh, Fiddler on the Roof, okay. uh, which just celebrated its 50th year. Uh, originally won seven Tony, nine Tony Awards in 1964, uh, is going to receive a, a, a Broadway revival this year. Oh, um, this community hasn't seen it in a while. I believe hmm. it's been over 10 years, and Parkland Theater's never produced it before. Oh, very good. Uh, so uh, we're very excited about it because it, it's beloved and, and it has probably one of the strongest stories of, of the classic American musicals. Well, and appropriate for Parkland because in 2016 we'll be celebrating our 50th anniversary as well. So how appropriate that we will be doing something that's also celebrating its 50th anniversary. Absolutely. Just a word about auditions and opportunities mm -hmm. to participate for, for uh, friends and family and, and students out there in the community. It is open to folks in the community who that's want to right. participate? That's right. Everything uh, except for the student production. Sure. I, I believe now it's, it's just uh, uh, Parkland students. but. Um, Yes, a theater uh, auditions, and we actually just had both uh, Neighborhood 3 and Noises Off at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's open to Parkland, U of I, um, anyone in the community. Uh, th probably the easiest way is to like us on f and follow us on Facebook uh, or to uh, request that you receive uh, theater emails okay. uh, regarding that. And you can always visit the website. Always look at the website yeah. and have to check it out. Well, we're looking forward to a wonderful season. Thank you so much, as always, for being here and for all you do. Thank you so much. All righty. We'll be right back after this short break. Flying's always been on the family list. We've, we've always looked at it. We've, for many years, we've always looked at, you know, what plane should we get as a family? But actually having the training has been in doubt because of the U of I cancellation of the program, and we're really excited to see that Parkland picked it up and makes it more available to me, too. It's different. I have to make sure I catch everything. Don't miss anything. Mandy usually backs me up. Just if I miss something little, she'll catch it. But it was just I got every little thing, making sure I did it right. A little bit nervous. Wasn't sure what the landing was going to be like without someone to correct if I messed up. But it's exciting. Out here since the end of August, actually getting the training. I ended my internship here in the spring, so I got a few flights before that. And then it's just been flying with Mandy for those previous 24 hours, getting ready to do everything, practicing touch and goes. So was, then she put me up in the 80s for the number of landings. And then the rest of the practice is going around doing maneuvers, stalls, slow flight, turns. My mom's parents live overseas, so we traveled over to see them. So we've been on a lot of big planes, and then I figured that'd be something fun to do. And my dad has lots of model aircraft, so we fly those too. So I started on that, and then I guess I worked my way up. It's, it's a good day to see that he's succeeding in something that's ahead of his dad, and knowing that in a couple years he'll be my instructor for when I get to go up and do this. live play-by-play -play coverage of Parkland Sports. Live the action live. Cobersports.net 
Joining me in this uh, section of the show, uh, Lisa Costello. She's the director of the Gertz Art Gallery here at Parkland College. Welcome to the Parkland Report. Thank you. And so uh, this year we're going to be going to the Farnsworth House, mm -hmm. which is in uh, Plano, Illinois, or Sandwich, Illinois. And that was a Mies van der Rohe home, so one of the few in the United States. And uh, so it's a beautiful modern um, home that was designed for Miss, Miss Farnsworth. And um, so we're going to see that coming up soon. And then we're also going to go to uh, the Dana Thomas House, which was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Excellent. And that's in Springfield, Illinois. So, so details about this, we can find them on the website. We can find them at the community Yeah, education. you can find them on the website. And um, we'll, I'm sure we'll have them posted here on the station. And uh, so, yeah, visit our website. We always love to have people come and check that out. And then also the community education catalog, too. Excellent. So um, great way for for patrons of the gallery to yeah, to it's a help great way a to support and us and go, you know, do a wonderful day trip, and they're pretty inexpensive. Wonderful and architecture. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun. Well, so I know we're 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 in the middle. It's the show is up already, and it's it's the annual um, faculty um, art and design yeah. faculty show. I did, of course, have a chance to to see it, and really an interesting show. Um, and I think the thing that surprised me most about it was the fact that there might have been less works on show than in previous years. Yeah, that's true. I think there were a couple of things. Um, one, the walls aren't painted <laughs> this year. I've gone all white, yes. so um, usually I would do a color. Um, and then also, I think, yeah, we're, well, uh, so Peggy Shaw did this really big, beautiful video that is kind of, um, minimal and uh, but yet beautiful and it kind of is a slow work of art where you kind of watch it and it changes gradually um, so that was really exciting and that took up you know a wall mm -hmm. and then um, we have uh, Craig McMonicle who is retiring this year right. and he won uh, I think after 20 22 years of teaching he's retiring yes. um, I think he's still too young to retire yes it's, I agree it's, yeah <laughs> but um, congratulations to him and um, he is uh, he won the um, Illinois Community College statewide. Trustee Association. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited. So he spoke at the reception and did a wonderful job. Um, and so he has four works, and um, we have some new people who are teaching in graphic design, and so they're also exhibiting their work. Uh, and um, as well as Melinda McIntosh does beautiful work. She's a printmaker by trade, and she teaches drawing here at Parkland. Um, Denise Seif has some beautiful jewelry, some brooches, and so, um, and of course there's always Chris Birdie with his beautiful uh, sculptures, kind of small. So sculptures. it's amazing, first of all, the breadth of the, of the work that's done here. Yeah. Uh, by, by, we are, we always, I always refer to them as working artists because they are artists and teachers. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's mean, part of the reason that we have the exhibit. I think people in the community and students as well are really interested in what our faculty are doing um, in their downtime if they really have downtime. I have always been impressed, and it was again in this uh, exhibit, about um, how much the artists are constantly working to expand and reimagine and try different things. And I've been lucky enough to see over the you know, last few years how people have made some dramatic changes. I mean, you sort of referenced uh, Peggy Shaw's work earlier on, and I mean, while that began, you know, began in a sort of a miniature form in many ways, a sort of a similar kind of subject matter where, you know, connection with water and an individual sort of staring across a, a body of space, and how that has changed over the years, and then to, to move into this, like you said, video and slow mm -hmm. art piece. It's really interesting to me how yeah. much change has happened in these artists' lives. Yeah, and I think that's part of um, you know being a really talented artist is constantly wanting to learn new things and do new things and take on those challenges. And so you know, like uh, Joan Stoltz's work, um, you know, she does amazing paintings and has been doing uh, portraits of dogs for a while. Um, and then all of a sudden, she started doing people a couple of years ago, sleeping. Mm -hmm figures. So that's part of her life and she wanted to incorporate it in her work and these are just amazing pastels that blew me out of the water. So um, it's really, I think that's just part of the personality of many artists to want to 
keep learning and keep changing and keep growing. And, I, and you see it in their classes as well, how they teach. You know, they're constantly changing and revising their syllabus. I think it's rare to find an art teacher that's teaching something the same way that they taught it, you know, three years ago. So there's a lot of effort that goes into kind of, you know, keeping up with what's happening and, and changes in their lives too, which is kind of nice. I also like the fact that um, a lot of recycled or reclaimed materials that are, are, are built into the, the, the construction of the art. And of course the functionality of the art, so in Laura O'Donnell's pieces, which are in incredibly functional and are used every day in my house, I can tell you yeah. the, the pieces. Um, and somebody like Matthew Watt, who came in as a sort of as a painter and who has now sort of morphed and done all kinds of interesting things, mm -hmm. and even was the musical act for the opening, which he I was, thought was really yeah, interesting as well. Yeah. Well, I think Laura O'Donnell is a really good example where she went to Japan um, a couple of years ago, and you can really see that influence in her work now. Um, you know, the way that there are there might be a special tray or plate for something for mm -hmm. a specific food. Um, and I, so I think she, she's been really influenced by those experiences as well. So she's another good example. And kudos to you for, for constantly keeping it fresh and bringing in new people. I know it is, you know, we, we, you've always done a great job in incorporating part-time faculty as well as full-time faculty. Oh, and yeah, I think well, that's they're just as wonderful. vital, yeah. you know, to our program. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and wonderful to see, see them. And, and it, yeah. was a, it was a great opening. And well, I, good. I'm glad I, you enjoyed it. I have to say something about uh, Chris Birdie's piece, uh, the, the baseball bat, which I think is one of the most wonderful conceits I've ever seen in terms <laughs> of the art within the art within the art. Mm -hmm. And uh, he never uh, stops uh, surprising me or amazing me with what he can do. And yeah, he really responds to materials around him. Yeah. So I think it's so amazing that he finds these bricks that already have a historical, you know, old bricks from buildings, and then he reinterprets them and um, carves them into something else. And, you know, he's really responding to the actual brick. So, um, you know, he has a background. I mean, he went to Alfred, um, which is in uh, New York, and that's a really strong, you know, ceramics program. And so he has a ceramics background, and he's using clay, but it's already fired, right. you know, fired brick. So I think that's always really, really interesting, interesting about mm -hmm. him. Um, and then, you know, he'll transform a, an old bat into something that has a lot of meaning, too. So right. he's one of those artists that is really about the environment yes. and working with materials. So. Well, excellent. Well, I, mm -hmm. I can't imagine how you would follow such an incredible <laughs> show like that. But I know you're going to because I know you have other things lined yeah, up. Yeah, I'm really excited about our upcoming shows. Um, Ornithology is one. It's a works by Barbara Kendrick and Monique Lucchetti. And Monique Lucchetti is an artist uh, Brooklyn-based, and so she um, is very interested in looking at specimens in museums. So it might be birds that are, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, of course they're deceased birds, <laughs> but um, she kind of brings them back to life. And so they're birds that you might not ever really get to see up close in in the natural environment. Maybe they're shy, or you know, you don't live in that area. And so um, they're just amazing pieces, and she really responds to material like Chris Birdie and uses um, natural papers um, mm. that she has uh, found from all over the world. And then she does these amazing drawings. They're going to be great for our drawing students and our painting students. She uses gouache, and, and they're huge. They're like um, these big pieces. So when you see them, they, you know, when you see them in print, like on our card, it's like this big, but they're actually these huge pieces that you're going to respond to. So they're larger than life, these beautiful, maybe an owl or a bird that yes. she's used. So I'm really excited about her work. Um, and of course, they roll up in a tube, you know, so yeah. that's quite nice yes. for us. Um, and then uh, uh, Barbara Kendrick is actually a retired professor from the University of Illinois, and she taught in the painting program there. And she's been working on collages. and. Yeah. Um, so I've always been an admirer of her, and I have always thought she was a great teacher. I never had her myself, but um, always really liked her work, and she also responds to kind of things around her. Um, and so she's interested in birds and how they kind of thrive in you know, our, the environment that we've kind of created, like sure. how they'll make. Um, their nest and signage on sure, a, sure. you know, on a, at a Walmart or something. Right. And so, um, so she's done these really beautiful collages. So I'm interested to see what both of them together, how that's going to work out. Excellent. So I was so excited about the show then. It's also um, 
sustainability month mm -hmm. and um, so we're working with our uh, campus sustainability committee and we're bringing in um, a, a bird specialist from the Anita Purvis Nature Center, oh, Savannah. So. And so she's going to bring in an owl that's a survivor of some sort of accident that was rescued. And so it can't, it couldn't return back to nature because it's missing a, one of its eyes. Um, so she's going to bring it in and we're going to get to meet it. Very and neat. yeah, it'll be exciting. So I'm happy that we're able to do kind of campus-wide initiatives Excellent. as well with this exhibit coming up. So what's up after the well, then we have our ceramics biennial, right. and uh, with our ceramics biennial, it's actually going to be curated by Chris Birdie, so okay. that'll be really nice. I don't think he's curated an exhibition since I've been here, um, and that will open in November, and we produce a catalog for that. And so he, um, the work is really interesting. It's kind of a lot of different artists with different styles of ceramic work. Um, mainly functional, but um, the work, it's based on four by one, so each artist is, is submitting four works. So it can okay. be a set, like it could be, you know, a set of four plates, sure. like Laura O'Donnell's work, or it could be, you know, four, four teapots that are in a series, mm -hmm. you know, however the artists wanted to interpret it. So that's going to be really exciting as well, and um, I think the catalog is just going to be beautiful. So. so a little trickier to get stuff here. You got to be careful shipping that stuff. Yeah, sometimes, shipping right? is always, but you know, ceramic artists are pros at that. Yeah, I mean, no you know, every, they really understand the UPS guidelines for <laughs> shipping, and um, so that's always really important. You know, talk about the the catalog that we produce really quickly. Uh, sure. About that, that is sort of unique, and then also just gives you a chance to talk about the fact that we're now, you know, you're getting submissions from across the country. This isn't the a local or even a regional at this point, you're getting nationally known artists. Yeah, so we, well, we got so inundated with um, submissions that we started doing it online. So you can go to our website and there's an online um, submission form and it takes in, you know, you have to submit 20 images of your work, a resume, an artist statement, mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes we'll include group shows and things like that and sometimes there'll be solo exhibits and um, so a lot of that, I mean, I think before I started working in a gallery, to me it was very like, oh, they either like my work or they don't like their sure. work. But that's not always the case. Sometimes it's practicality, you know, Where like it fits what in the rest of the pieces. Exactly, and, and how does it respond to some of the, what our students are doing on campus? And you know, like the ornithology is perfect for sure. Sustainability Month, and. Um, also, just the fact that you know we have a lot of drawing classes and things like that. So we really try to emphasize we have a strong ceramics program. We have a ceramics biennial. Um, last you know year we did a photography show. So we're trying to always incorporate things that that are that we feel like our students will get sure. a and lot out of. And we also have a student show. That we do. Comes in. We have two student shows, and those happen in the spring. Excellent. Um, before those, though, we're going to have a show. Um, with Jason Piot uh -huh. and uh, Ann, Ann uh, Coddington. Um, she teaches at Eastern Illinois and Jason teaches up in the Chicago area. They're going to be, they both were accepted, their works were through the state art program, so we're going to have their works in our permanent collection. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. And then we'll have our two student shows which are wonderful to finish off the year. Always a really great treat to see the the products that students come up with. You have a couple of pieces on the table. I don't I want do. you to let you leave yeah. before you Thank mention you. them. Well, the Ace Awards are coming up, and um, I'm part. I'm on the 40 North uh, Champaign County Arts Council board, and I wanted to mention the 40 North uh, Ace Awards. And basically, they're awards that are given out to artists in the area, or advocates, teach art teachers. Um, there are about seven different categories, and we won one a couple of years ago, the Excellent. Gertz Gallery. Um, and Chris Birdie has won one, and um, Steve Hudson has won one. So I just wanted to, you know, uh, let people know about it. It's a great event and opportunity to go and celebrate the arts in Champaign County, and that's coming up in October. So people might want to check the 40 North website for Excellent. that. And then the other thing that we have here are um, some pieces that are going to be on our in our silent auction. These two pieces here, um, and these were made by our students, and um, so. We have, uh, it's called Coffee, Tea, Cups, and Dessert, and it's a benefit for the gallery, and we sell tickets um, two for 50 or one for 30, 
and uh, people come and they get to pick out a mug that's been made by one of our faculty or one of our students and they get to take drink from that and take it home yes, indeed. <laughs> and there's desserts and then we're also gonna have a silent auction so these are just a couple of uh, pieces that I quickly grabbed a beautiful right. vase and then a really nice um, little container here Excellent. yeah so that'll be coming up December 4th from 4 to 7 and we'll have live music perfect although just I haven't booked that music yet just in time <laughs> just in time for Christmas we'll yeah. see happen. So, yeah as always wonderful to see you it's a wonderful start of the year look forward to very many exciting things at Gertz Gallery in the in the coming academic year and thanks so much for being great here. yeah thank you so much for having me Alrighty. That's it for this edition of Parkland Report. We'll see you back here next time.